Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that first composition was entitled Ode to Water, and that was written by uh, Paul Geis. And um, you know, considering what the price is for a rainbow, uh, water is something that's very important to all of us. We, we need it to drink, we need it to survive, we need it for the plants to grow, all sorts of things. So uh, Paul wrote that as a reminder of how uh, important water is to all of us. Um, so now moving right along to the next composition, uh, which is uh, one of mine, uh, it deals with the development of uh, a city. And so uh, typically when civilizations evolve, um, they evolve along coastlines, um, if you, you know, look at history, and uh, cities typically spawn up uh, as things are developing. So I want you to imagine or think about the idea of the price of a rainbow as the city's developing. Right, so this next uh, composition of mine is entitled City on a River. Thank 
If you think about the development of a city and you know the pollutants that end up happening and um, you know just due to industry building and people settling and things like that, um, those those things have an effect on the environment and sometimes those effects are on the negative end. And so if we think about uh, what's been occurring over the past, I don't know, let's say 15 to 20 years as a uh, good bracket here, we've had a ton of uh, very severe hurricanes. We've had terrible uh, snowstorms. Um, how many of you recall the, the two or three nor'easters that happened in the springtime, I want to say, maybe around 2016, 2015, 2016, around there? 
Uh, it was the middle of springtime, and we get a nor'easter. That's not supposed to happen, right? The groundhog sees a shadow, and all right, we're headed for spring. So uh, this composition is written by Paul, and it's talking about it, it, it focuses on how things got here a little bit earlier than we expected them to. Um, so if you look around at all the storms that are happening, these things are happening way earlier than predicted. So we, we need to be mindful of the decisions that we make uh, now going forward. Uh, so this is Paul's composition entitled, It Got Here Early. Thank you. 
So this next one, uh, this breach is a subject that, that can be deemed a little bit controversial. Um, so there are some folks who believe in conspiracy theories in, in the idea that, you know, there are certain things designated to certain people or places um, and how unfair that can really be. So I don't want to go too deep into it, but do you, well, you as an audience member, here's the challenge I give to you. Do you think that there are any conspiracy theories? And here's Paul's piece, Conspiracy Theories. Okay, so now following that up, uh, following conspiracy theories up with um, another one of Paul's compositions. Um, so now this one begs the question, what zip codes are important to you? Now let's kind of contextualize this because that's a bit of an abstract question. So if we think about that question in terms of what happened in New Orleans, and I'm going to uh, take a quick second to tell a little bit of a story here. So. Um, my wife and I, we had the opportunity to go on our honeymoon tour to New Orleans, a very great place to visit if you haven't been. And uh, on one of our excursions, we went down to, uh, outside of the French Quarter, um, I believe into the Ninth Ward, I want to say. And uh, this is 2015 at the time. And uh, Katrina had happened uh, years earlier. The damage still persisted. 
Think about that for a second. Where did the money go? There were parts of New Orleans that are still pretty rough from Katrina, still. So conspiracy theories and zip codes. And as a matter of fact, if we look here in our own city of Philadelphia, we see patches of town that are, com that com are completely run down, right? So we have to think what zip codes are important Right. So having said that, here's the composition. What, what zip codes are important to you?
All right, thank you very much. Now, in, um, in considering uh, what zip codes are important to you, there's, there's this thing that happens uh, as, as Homer had mentioned a little earlier, that whenever we see a rainbow, there's some pain involved, right? So in thinking about how you know, cities develop, and sometimes we have these floods, right? Now, I uh, drew a little bit of inspiration from, from the idea of a flood. So for example, a flood is rather anticlimactic. It's unfortunate that it happens, but it's rather anticlimactic. Um, so first of all, the water will start at your feet. It slowly just rises up to your, your knees. And then if it gets any worse, it just it keeps going. But it's not like you get this deluge and then woof, you're full. It's a very slow process, but it's a process that does happen. Um, so this composition, I want you to imagine yourself being flooded. Okay, so here's my composition, flood.
thank you very much. Uh, so this next uh, composition uh, deals with, um, I, I actually wrote it when I was thinking about what, how important are rivers to us? How important are they? And when it rains, how important is that? So this, this next composition is entitled River Song. <laughs> while falling on your roof. What is it? It's the rain. Nature's R&R. &R. What makes water falling from the sky so important? Well, you see, the rain gives us some of our favorite foods, right? However, if enough falling water from the sky pools, your home can be washed away as in the case of New Orleans. Your highway system can become useless, as in the recent case in Philadelphia. Imagine being unable to escape your own house. If you can't escape your home, is there a road from which you can drive on to get out? Or did the falling water rise high enough to stop your car in its tracks. That's something to think about. But there is a way to help slow this down. Yes, nature's destructive power can be held off. But there are decisions that we have to make today that will affect us later on. So what are some of those decisions that you can make? If you can take public transit, if you can carpool, make those choices. Because if you think about it, the more we utilize our public transit system, or at least go greener or carpool more, we have cleaner rain. The rain has less to clean out of the air, right? So remember the food thing I mentioned a little earlier? Cleaner rain will give us better food. Now, if we have better food, we're better people. And the cycle goes on from there. So, Think about your decisions today because the price of a rainbow comes tomorrow.
this next one, uh, you know, so now we're thinking about the rivers, so now let's blow this up to the entire planet. And so it's important that we leave something behind for those who are coming after us. So again, the decisions that you make today affect what happens tomorrow. So having said that, this next composition of mine, this one is entitled The Gentle Earth.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, before we go, uh, I'd like to say a couple uh, quick thank yous. Um, so first of all, um, can we thank uh, the Philly Waterworks for their participation in this? Can we thank Mr. Homer Jackson and all at the Philadelphia Jazz Project for this? Thank you, thank you. Can we thank our uh, sound crew, our video crew? Thank you, thank you for your documentation. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you uh, to these gentlemen I've been sharing the stage with uh, for the past hour or so. So Bill Sourman on trombone, Sam Turley on tuba, Mr. Alan Nelson on the drums. I am yours truly, Marcel Bellinger, trumpet, flugelhorn, and compositions. I'd also like to thank and acknowledge my writing, my, my uh, collaborative partner, Mr. Paul Geis, who is also a trumpet player and on these compositions as well. And uh, for this last number, uh, so we have to get out of the state of gloom and doom. I know this, you know, this was pretty heavy and we we're thinking about the price of a rainbow. But the other thing that's associated with a rainbow is happiness, right? So while we think about the decisions that we have to make for our future to make sure that we are happy, let's take a moment and observe the beauty that we're in now and be happy, right? So here's Paul's composition entitled, Him for Happiness. Thank you for coming out, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you all, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.
Thank you.